Okay, I'm going to be addressing the Georgia Guidestones again um, in a little bit more detail and I'm also going to pick up a little bit of Joseph McGruber's comment on my previous video um, where he again doesn't seem to have got what I tried to explain in my previous video. So what he writes here is how does during the Cold War add any more credence to the enviro-waco ideas of the Georgia Guidestones. How are you so bizarrely obsessed with that? Craziness justifies more craziness. The very important point is that these Guidestones, this granite monument, was put up during the Cold War. Um, if it was not, that wouldn't be relevant, but the fact that it was built in 1979 and 1980 is very important. Um, a lot of people were genuinely worried about some kind of nucle imminent nuclear war, which thankfully didn't happen. But to regard that as sort of mere coincidence seems very sort of simple-minded to me. Um, the conspir conspiratorial way of looking at these things seems to tie it in with um, something else I would like to address in a bit more detail in the future, which is um, a United Nations document written in the early 90s um, called Agenda 21. And conspiracy theorists like to bring this up, um, as well as things that um, Prince Philip and what's his name Rockefeller I think it's one, one of the Rockefellers has said um, which they claim are um, these people and these organizations saying that they want to cull 90% uh, of the human population and when you actually look into what has been said I, I don't understand how they can extract interpret it in that you know crazy way it's it's, it's not like that at all um, some of these conspiracy theorists also have a major problem with David Attenborough David Attenborough the, the guy who makes all these amazing wildlife documentaries on the BBC and has done for many decades um, it was a bit of an eye-opener for me a few years ago running into these but this particular brand of conspiracy theorists, you might call them anti-environmentalists. Um, they nearly always are climate change deniers, amongst other things. Um, so, yeah, to, with regard to Joseph McGruber's comment, uh, I mean, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, he's asking me, how am I so bizarrely obsessed with that? The fact that they were built during, put up during the Cold War. I think that is very relevant. And what little we do know about um, the location of them, the fact that they are made from granite and written in eight different languages, um, all conveying a message which was inspired, no doubt, by the biblical Ten Commandments. Um, and the fact that the you know the, lo the location of them, I think, um, significant significantly inland and above sea level. So if there was you know major ocean rising, um, then they would still be out of harm's way. And also they serve as a kind of Rosetta Stone, because if civilization were decimated and um, only a few people survived, and even if it took them a long time to sort of re-establish any kind of uh, technologically advanced civilization, the fact that the same message is presented in eight different languages, and uh, there are also four ancient languages, I think Sanskrit and Hebrew, um, with a shorter message at the top, um, I think that is particularly relevant. But, according to some of the conspiracy theorists, no, it's all to do with wanting to commit mass genocide. Anyway, 
He goes on to write, Words of wisdom. What? Paganism is not words of wisdom. Where is the divine inspiration of such pagan heresies? Obviously, his Christian bias is shining through here. Um, words of wisdom, that's something I brought up in my previous, wiz previous video. And I think um, some of the what is written is, you know, it, it, it's long-term thinking rather than the, the sort of short-term thinking which seems to be so prevalent today. So what I will do is I've got the um, Wikipedia page for the um, Georgia Guidestones on here. I can't make edited videos these days, but just, I don't know if that will be in focus or not, but that's, that is what they look like. That, those are the Georgia Guidestones. <coughs> so, excuse me, still got a bit of a cold. The actual inscriptions in English um, start with, number one, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. That is the thing which the main guideline, whatever you want to call it, which these conspiracy theorists interpret as a wish to cull humanity. But, obviously, when you look at it within the context of what would that sentence mean if civilization had already collapsed and there were only a few thousand, a few million survivors? And, you know, looking upon what would, you know, assuming it's, you know, many centuries in the future, they might regard, you know, they might look at it in a similar way to how we would read the inscriptions on Egyptian temples or something like that. So, um, they would no doubt pay attention to that and, you know, ponder on why 500 million. Um, I, as somebody who has looked into the subject of ecology, would say that's a pretty realistic idea of how many people it would be possible to for the Earth to inhabit indefinitely, to, to accommodate indefinitely, um, using the sort of technology that we use today. Um, burning fossil fuels, etc. Um, and it says maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. It's obviously thinking long term um, and it's emphasizing the point in balance with nature. Anyway, the second one is what I would regard as the most controversial um, because it could be interpreted as well, try not to knock the camera over. It could be interpreted as being pro-eugenics. Um, anyway, number two is guide reproduction wisely improving fitness and diversity. Now, if you think of that in terms of choices that individual people make, we kind of do that anyway. Most people um, don't decide to have children with the first person they encounter. Um, so it's kind of common sense, but improving fitness and diversity, um, that implies, you know, thinking long and hard about who you're going to mate with. Um, and this is, of course, assuming that it's talking about humans. Um, number three, unite humanity with a living new language. Um, that's something I've thought about a little bit before. Um, a lot of the world uses English, and obviously keep in mind that this was written, these were thought up in the 1970s. Um, we're in 2018 now. We have the internet, which wouldn't have even been dreamed about back then, hardly. Um, but still, the idea of uniting humanity with a lang language which everybody can speak, so everybody, everyone can understand each other, there's no room for misunderstanding, I would say, is not necessarily a bad thing. Don't have a particularly strong opinion on it either way. Number four, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Um, I can't really 
don't really have a strong opinion on that either. I mean, it seems to make, you know, fairly good sense. Um, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Um, I don't see how a conspiracy theorist could argue with that. They generally don't bring that up anyway, but there it is. Number five, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Now that seems that seems fairly wise and common sense. Um, you don't want corruption and you don't want people to be wrongfully imprisoned for things they haven't done, etc. Um, and having that, that there as a guideline or uh, something worth striving for seems to be no bad thing. Number six, let all nations rule internally resolving... Start that again. I think there's a common missing. Let all nations rule internally resolving external disputes in a world court. Again, um, you know, letting individual nations sort out their own affairs and external multinational, international disputes, resolving that in a world court seems to be fairly wise and sensible rather than, you know, trying to blow each other up. Number seven, I particularly like this one, avoid petty laws and useless officials. Um, I have a bit of a personal beef with bureaucracy and what you might call the nanny state, um, ridiculous instructions that try to compensate for common sense. Um, so yeah, no, no arguments with that one. Number eight, balance personal right, balance personal rights with social duties. Um, not really much to say about that. Um, it's uh, yeah. Uh, I'll just move on to number nine. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Potentially a little bit um, so waffly waffly for. For, for me, for my personal outlook, um, you know, the infinite, uh, it, it could be interpreted religiously, um, but even so, prize, prizing truth, beauty and love, and seeking harmony, if you say with the infinite, if you, do, if you leave that bit out, then yes, I would agree 100% with all of that. Number 10, um, also strikes a chord with me. Be not a cancer on the earth. Leave room for nature. Leave room for nature. And that is repeated. That last part is repeated twice. Um, that can and often is misinterpreted by conspiracy theorists and even people like Jordan Peterson. Um, the idea, even sort of daring to suggest or to think that human humanity could be viewed as a cancer. Um, it's not a particularly nice thing, but then a lot of the stuff which people are doing to the planet is not particularly nice. So I think it's something we need to think about to address and uh, leaving room for nature, that's... Uh, it, it's, it's kind of, to me, it, it's a no-brainer. Um, we, we absolutely depend on the natural world for our survival. We need ecosystems to be healthy. Um, so leaving room for nature means not encroaching too much on it. And that's a point I particularly want to drive home for Mr. MacGruber. Anyhow, that's all I'm going to deal with just now. And uh, I look forward to people's comments in the comment section below. Oh, while I'm here, um, there are some, you know, people whinge a lot about the YouTube comments section, and yes, there is a lot of absolute nonsense there, a lot of idiots write nonsense, but there's quite a lot which people have written in my comments section, which um, is very thoughtful and insightful, so thank you very much for everyone who has commented, and I may um, read some of those comments out in future videos if I get myself a little bit better organised and if I've got the time. Anyway, thank you for watching 
and see you next time.